Hey guys, it's Megan, and welcome back to my channel, The Crafty Quinn. I like to make high-end decor using mostly Dollar Tree items. And in today's video, I have four neutral Easter farmhouse style DIYs for you. And the Crafty Kitty and I are so excited for you to see them, so let's jump right in. So for my first DIY here, we have the Happy Easter Dollar Tree wood sign, and I'm using my Waverly Ballet Slipper um, color chalk paint for this. If you're new to my channel, I love using uh, chalk paint on my crafts mostly just because for the, you know, the sake of video recording, it's just really fast drying and um, the texture of the chalk paint comes out really nice. So you'll see me using um, chalk paint like this, whether it's from Waverly or Michaels um, on all of my DIYs. So I just gave that um, quick two coats actually. And you'll notice that I'm using a Purell wipe. And the reason for this is because I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm using, I needed a wet wipe basically to just spread the wax around. And this was a neat trick that I learned from Savvy Crafts with Savannah. And um, you just take a wet wipe and you dip it in the antique wax, your Waverly antique wax. And the wet wipe helps spread around the wax a lot better for when you're using this on wood crafts. So it's just a really quick technique that I learned and it's been super helpful in uh, my DIYs like this. If I'm looking for a way to make sure that everything is spread around nicely and evenly. And for this, you're just gonna wanna, you know, get it as best you can because it is, you know, the bunny is attached to the words. So just get it as best you can. And um, like I said, I like using a wet wipe. So that was a great little um, quick way to make sure the wax gets um, onto your sign properly. So I'm just cleaning up the edges there. And it's not, you know, it's not gonna be perfect because the bunny is attached to the words, but just get it as best you can. And there's a crafty kitty, there's his first appearance. He's gonna be in this video a lot. And he just went ahead and stole the lid, but don't worry, there's no paint on it. So you'll notice now I'm just doing some quick cleanup on my Amazon silicone crafting mat. And all it takes is a wet wipe to for the paint to come off of this mat, and then you're ready for your next project. So I am never gonna go back to using crafting paper again, and I've gone ahead and linked this crafting mat for you below in the description of my video. And if you end up getting this, let me know how you like it. So now for the last step, I'm just taking some of the um, Dollar Tree raffia and just wrapping this around um, the bunny. Just wanna give it a cute little bow, and this is just, so easy to do. So I just took two strands of it and then I'm gonna make just a cute little rustic bow. I really wanted to keep this DIY pretty uh, minimalist. Um, I really like kind of, I don't know, I kind of go either way. I either go very minimalist on a craft or I go all out. <laughs> kind of like, I, I feel like maybe there's no in between, but I, I like the way that this one turned out. So I'm just redoing this bow <laughs> really quick. Um, because this is not an easy material to make a bow with. Um, <laughs> so just giving that another shot. And then Marcus is, of course, trying to steal um, the raffia. Anytime I was working with this, he hopped up on the, on the table and tried to take it from me. He likes this stuff, of course, because it's something that's like a string that moves. So <laughs> I'm just giving this a quick snip. Yep, yep, and he's trying to get it. <laughs> and then it's basically all done. And then I use some of that um, Dollar Tree jute, twine, whatever you want to call it. And just, I tied, I want to say I tied this maybe a couple times each, um, just so that the, the twine wouldn't go through um, the holes and the, the, wouldn't fall out of the sign. So I just made, um, I just knotted it twice for each side. There you go. I think it seems... Okay, one more time, <laughs> and then it's sturdy. And you don't even need to hot glue the, the raffia either to the bunny, it just, it stays on like that. So um, there's certainly times where I, I have uh, needed to hot glue that down, but for this one, I didn't really feel the need. And just like that, it's basically done. Yeah, no, it is done. <laughs> So this is just how I styled it on my countertop in my kitchen. And this is kind of just where I like to stage things. But um, yeah, this is my uh, Dollar Tree neutral Easter sign. 
So for the next DIY, um, I have those Dollar Tree golden eggs that just came out with, a, a, with the rest of their Easter stuff this season. And a lot of people are doing stuff with the egg carton and I'm not sure um, if I'm going to do something with that too, maybe eventually. But um, for now, I'm just going to uh, use the tray for this craft. And for this, I'm using my little ladybug vacuum that you just saw. And whenever I use that, Marcus, for some reason, he's attracted to the noise. So he just hops up on the table whenever I use this. But this is another one of the, uh, this is another Amazon find actually. And that, that was really cheap, but it has really come in handy, you guys. I I get, you know, little things from the from the Dollar Tree Spanish moss or just the regular moss, and then I need something to, you know, clean that up because otherwise I gotta stop everything that I'm doing just to clean up all of the excess when you're painting the, you know, something like this on top of it. So that little uh, Amazon vacuum has really come in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that down for you guys in the description box as well. So I'm just, painting the eggs and by the way this was obviously not the best way to do this and I just wanted you guys <laughs> to see my failure of course because this was not a good technique to paint this um, and I learned that the hard way because I got paint all over my fingers so I just ended up taking um, some of those Dollar Tree oh my gosh I can't think of the name of them marshmallow sticks um, <laughs> and I put um, so each of the eggs has a hole at the very bottom and then um, those sticks actually um, were the perfect size to be able to keep the egg in place while you're painting. So it was a great little kind of last minute hack because I was trying to find something to hold these in place so I could paint it and paint every single side of the egg. So this worked out. And I recommend giving the eggs at least two coats of paint, especially if you're using chalk paint. Um, and you know, the, the, the eggs are plastic too, so you have to keep that in mind. So definitely recommend two coats um, on each egg. And I don't think I did that for all of them. So that's why I recommend definitely doing that because I learned that the hard way too. So I'm just taking that Dollar Tree wooden tray and I'm going to stain this using my, uh, my Waverly antique wax that you see there. Been using that a lot lately. And I'm using that take technique that I showed you again. So I normally use makeup wipes but the only thing, I ran out of makeup wipes and uh, the only thing I had in my house was the uh, the Purell wipes because I'm sure we've all got a lot of those right now. <laughs> so I just grabbed those and those work too. So uh, don't worry, I still got plenty of those in the house. <laughs> so I'm just using um, the wet wipe to spread around the, the antique wax to stain the wood and um, like I said, this was a really quick, uh, great technique, and I highly recommend this because you're not going to get the same, um, I guess, spreadability <laughs> with a paper towel. The paper towels tend to just absorb the stain, and then uh, you're going to be going through paper towels and stain like crazy. So just get something that's going to help spread around the stain. And just skipping ahead here because this took a minute and by a minute, um, maybe 10 minutes at least uh, to stain the whole thing. And um, I didn't get every single corner of this box. I do want it to look like a rustic crate and you know, it's, it's not gonna be perfect. And so now I'm just kind of making it a little bit more rustic with the Waverly chalk paint. I'm just going, going back and just kind of um, going lightly over it to make it more, um, rustic and farmhousey. In some parts I went a little heavier with the paint and then uh, mostly I just kind of kept it to like a, a light brush, brush uh, stroke.
There you go, you can kind of see how that's turning out a little bit. And now, um, <laughs> I kind of taught myself a technique for how to get these um, speckled eggs. Uh, I just took my dry brush that I normally um, use with the antique wax. So I'm using antique wax right here. And normally I take this dry brush and if I painted something white, I take this and I kind of spread that over it lightly, the, like the same way I was doing with the crate. And then it gives it that rustic weathered look. But instead of doing that, I'm just lightly tapping the egg with the dry brush with a small amount of antique wax on it. And then there you go, you got your speckled eggs. So this was a really quick and easy technique to, to do these eggs. I haven't seen anybody else doing it like this. This is, I literally just came up with this on the fly. So uh, it just kind of worked out perfect without even meaning to. So <laughs> I'm taking now some of that Dollar Tree uh, Spanish moss and quick disclaimer that I give about this moss every time I work with a craft uh, with this on one of my videos. And that is if you have sensitive skin, just be mindful of the Spanish moss. And there you go. And <laughs> this is exactly why I got this ladybug uh, vacuum for materials like this. And so what I was saying about the Spanish moss is if you're, if you have sensitive skin and you're working with it, just be careful because it will make you break out a little bit, um, just a little bit, just a little bit uh, of redness you might see on your fingers, um, like I experienced. And I didn't think that I had sensitive skin, but um, for some reason, sometimes when I use this, it makes me break out a little bit. So just be cautious. And I'm trying to spread around this, this moss one-handed and that was not an easy task. Uh, but, but the egg in my hand wasn't quite dry yet, so I'm trying to, to get this all spread out. And I think Marcus was trying to steal a paintbrush there in the background, so I think he uh, made an appearance for all of my crafts this, this time. <laughs> so I'm just trying to spread out the moss a little bit so that the egg can, can sit easily. And like I said, that was not an easy task because I was impatient and just um, <laughs> wanted to see how this would look. Uh, so I'm trying to do this one-handed and the egg's not quite dry yet. And uh, <laughs> I've always heard, don't put your eggs in one basket, but for this DIY, I went ahead and did that. <laughs> okay, that was a bit of a lame joke, but I had to, I had to do it. And then here's the final product. I'm kind of obsessed with these, so... Um, yeah, so stay tuned to see how I style them around my house uh, on my Instagram. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what exactly he was doing, but he saw that I was using the carrots for this next DIY and he had to be there. Um, I'm only using five carrots for these pots because, and I would have had a six one um, had he not stolen it from me. So um, <laughs> as you can see there, he loves these. He thinks they're like a little cat toy. Um, so just be careful if you have a cat, they might become obsessed with them like mine was. So I'm just using those Dollar Tree foam brushes and these are actually Dollar Tree clay pots. They come in a pack of three and um, I'm just using the, the foam brush with the Waverly white chalk paint again. I love to use that for everything. Um, and this was a really good brush to help spread this around evenly. I didn't paint the whole inside of, of the pots, you'll see. I just kind of did that near the top of it. Um, you know, it's not completely it's not completely necessary because you're gonna fill them. And uh, I just kind of did it just a little bit. And then there I got those, the, that's a 30 pack of brushes and I actually got those 
uh, from Walmart um, when I went there to get that pink Waverly chalk paint. So if you're looking for the Waverly chalk paint, you can only find it at Walmart. Um, and that's what I've learned. I've looked online. I thought it was sold elsewhere. So I'm not sure if it's Walmart's brand. Um, so let me know if, it, if, you, if you know for sure if it is Walmart's brand in the, in the comments below. So now I'm just taking one of those um, very skinny Walmart brushes that I was just talking about and I'm painting on um, five cents and <laughs> I probably should have used a thinner brush because it it came out a little bit rough. And you know, the, the more I thought about it, I was just kind of like, well, if if I was a farmer and I'm just, you know, drawing, drawing a price on this, you know, would I care if it looks pretty? Probably not. So. I just kind of thought about it that way and that made me feel a little bit better. So yeah, like I said, not my proudest uh, painting moment. <laughs> so now I'm doing what I normally do and that is to take my uh, dry brush with my, well, my distressing brush that I've now dubbed it and um, I'm taking that antique Waverly wax and I'm just roughing it up a little bit and making it look uh, rustic and farmhousey and kind of as if it's just come from the carrot patch. <laughs> I ended up putting way too much on this one. Uh, so then I just kind of, uh, I just took paper towel and just kind of smeared it a little bit. And then I, I probably should have uh, made the other two as even as this one, but uh, I ended up going much lighter on the other two. And there you have it, there's, there's the pots. So then I just kind of had to figure out how to sort them and I kind of put them um, in a way that they're kind of like um, diagonal in the pot and you can only fit two of them in here I tried I tried to get a third in there but it just looked bizarre so, <laughs> so I'm like you know what I'm gonna use all three of these pots and one of them is just gonna have one carrot <laughs> so now I'm just taking that Dollar Tree regular moss and by the way these are Dollar Tree carrots too um, and they came in a, they came in a six pack like I said and I would have had six if not for the crafty kitty so this is a really simple DIY you don't need um, to do a whole lot for this this was just you know you could just um, you could also make this distressed by just you know not fully covering it in paint too you don't have to you know distress it with some antique wax you could just kind of um, do a very very thin layer of paint and just kind of, you know, make it look rough that way. So there's definitely a couple ways you could do this. Um, and I just thought this was such a cute little, um, I don't know, little trinket to, to put on a tiered tray or something like that. Um, and I think, th I think I'm just gonna put these on uh, my tiered tray as well. And yep, it's for moments like this that you need something like this because it's, you know, the moss is quite a mess to deal with. So, um, highly recommend, <laughs> like I said, I highly recommend this little vacuum. So this is how it looks when you throw it into the, uh, the Target tiered tray. And Marcus could not resist them. <laughs> So for the next DIY, I am just taking a, um, a layer of chalk paint. Well, actually, I think I did two coats of uh, the Waverly white chalk paint for this one. Um, and the, the little box that I'm using is actually the Bunny Dollar Tree box. And so it's one of those like super tall boxes where um, it's super tall because on the very back of it, it's a bunny with like really long ears. So just be on the lookout for that box because I saw a bunch of those at Dollar Tree recently. Um, and it's different than the regular, you know, square boxes that you normally see sold at Dollar Tree. So uh, because of its, you know, unique shape, that's why I grabbed it. And um, I highly recommend you do the same. 
So here I'm taking those, um, those infamous Target stencils that everybody has been on the hunt for, and I'm using the Dollar Tree clamps, and I'm trying to secure the stencil down so that I could just, you know, easily work with it, and it's just, you know, it's not the perfect fit, so you just do it as best you can. So I'm just taking my finger sander actually, which was another Amazon find that I've linked down for you below. I'm taking my finger sander and I'm actually just kind of using that to keep it flat as I draw um, using the little, a little tiny foam brush that is also from Dollar Tree. So I'm taking my Waverly black chalk paint and I'm using that with this stencil and I needed something to keep it flat, but obviously, you know, you can do it as best you can and uh, it's not really going to stay flat the whole time <laughs> unless you have something to kind of, you know, tamp it down uh, like I did with my little finger sander there. I, I also want to mention that, so since this is this is the back of the sign. I did take off the metal hook that was on there um, and I just kind of filled in the holes with the hot glue, sanded it over it, and then painted it. So now I'm taking that Dollar Tree wood cutout and those wood cutouts do have a hole in the ear. So I filled that in with a uh, white um, just caulk that you would normally find around the house. Just filled in the hole, painted over it with my white, with my, sorry, with my pink uh, ballet slipper color, um, with really chalk paint. And now for this one, I am hot gluing down the raffia because I needed something to hold it in place so that I could easily tie a bow around the bunny. And there he is again because I'm using the raffia and he can't resist. I mean, I thought it was so cute. I, I love to leave in these little bloopers for you guys because Marcus was, he was too funny, especially with my crafts this time around. I think he showed up for every single one of them. He was just really bored last night. I'm not sure. <laughs> so I couldn't find scissors. I just grabbed some wire cutters, which is not the best thing to use on a material like this. Um, <laughs> it was just what was nearby. The funny thing about my cat is he thinks he's helping, but he, he's really not but at least he's here for moral support and I do appreciate that. You'll see I did mess up the paint there, but I am, uh, I'm covering that up with the bunny. So all is good. So here is a minimalist uh, bunny sign, neutral colors. What is Marcus up to? <laughs> of course, the second I walk away, he's got to inspect it. So then here it is, the final product in my tiered tray. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, if you want to watch more videos, I have them for you here on the left. So let's keep in touch. Follow me on Instagram, the, uh, the Crafty Quinn. And thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to hit subscribe. Thank you so much.